Alrighty then, welcome back. I just jumped out of the hall real quick. The video ended. Alright, let's prepare that. say tomorrow we won't be mining and heavy mining and raining and all this. So we won't be going through food like this anymore. Stack of food will be perfect. Oh, I forgot to eat that. Candy. Candy gives you buffs. Mines here suck. Sometimes you have sucky mines, sometimes you have good ones. These mines are like all intermixed with these stone, sand. They're kind of going really deep and kind of spread in weird shapes.
that making me work for this mine. Cut through all kinds of sand, clay, and stone just to get to the night street. That making me work for this one. Even. If you were underneath that, you'd be half dead right now, or dead. Trade for the uh, rest of the land, rest of the farm plots too. So we'll get like 3,300. So when we get ready to make farm plots again, we don't have to say, "Oh, we're out of nitrate." Right 
there. that this mine turned into nitrate. Nitrate and iron and I'm losing my coal. You get iron much quicker than the other resources. You get more particular with iron, I don't know why. I don't know if that's intentional or a, or a bug, but you always get more iron faster. I do want to make repair kits. Remember, I was telling you about repair kits and uh, how you make money with it, and that requires forged iron. So, get some of those up, some more up. You go through attack a stack of 25 pretty quickly. Once you start looting and upgrading, looting and upgrading. Killing my food. I cannot believe this. Rain, cold. I mean, hard. I'm got. I got hard cold too. I mean, that's why the red. You see the red flake. It's not just orange. It's red. I mean, they are. They are hitting me hard.
where I do have the Iron Breaker mod too. That helps. There. Let's get some coal and we're out of here. Some nitrate, sand, clay, stone, even iron is on the way to like hiding a hole down here. See, they're, they're trying to get me. There it is.
see the stone? We've already got over a full stack of stone, 6,000. Three thousand clay too, so gotta remember that. Oh, yay, the rain ended. It was cool while it lasted. I do like the rain. I wish, wish it wasn't raining on me when I was fucking mining. I like it when it's raining. I'm out there doing POIs and shit, and it's real gloomy. But when I'm trying to mine, it's killing my frigging food. Dude, that, that killed my food, man. That's all I did was kill my food. Cold, rain, mining, all at the same time. That's too much. I mean, that was just killing my food. Now, of course, it won't rain again for fucking months. I like it when it rains, when it's when I'm doing POIs. That's when it's, it's kind of cool. It's all Like I say, it's all gloomy and dark and pouring down the rain. It's kind of somber. You're fighting the zombies out in the rain and shit. That's cool.
down coal. I like how it just slid me down in that hole like that. Tracker. Just the first one. Okay. that direction while we hunt okay? and the way hunting works okay we just crouch you see little footsteps on the left hand side bottom left and it'll tell me it'll turn green and then it'll appear on my compass and on my map okay there's a chicken over there It's a hard to get in the grass sometimes. Meat and bones, all right? Travel a little ways. This time it'll tell me on the bottom of the screen. It should. So you don't see any tracks around here. Alright, so there's nothing here. So travel a little further. Try again. do is you can hunt an area out. It takes time for them to respawn, just like the zombies or anything else. And so what you can do to kind of defeat that is reset your game. Okay, if I turn the game on right now, turn it back on again, all the animals and everything will respawn. And then the place will be filled with animals again. I haven't been out here, so there should be some animals out here. Also understand that a lot of these spawns are spawning around you as you move forward. I do that to save processing. Okay, like I say, a voxel game 
has a lot of processing issues or has a lot to, a lot to process. So to cut down on that, they'll they don't just spawn shit just anywhere. It's spawning around you. Okay. So sometimes you just kind of chill for a minute in, a, in an area so that it starts to saturate down with with the with the things that are going to spawn in it. If you're hauling ass on your bike, you know, nothing is spawning around you because you're flying right through the area. There we go. Over there. The other side of this house. Like I say, the thing with chickens is chickens and rabbits. They give very little very little food at a time, very little meat. This is a lot safer and easier. And sometimes you have lots of lots of rabbits everywhere, lots of chicken everywhere. And sometimes you go out in the snow and you can't find a bear for shit. You know what I mean? So it's nice to have this because you can stay close to base and you can run out and get some meat whenever you need it. All right, it, it does come in handy. chill give them time to spawn around you nope there's a static spawn and then there's a dynamic spawn the static spawn is the one that just spawns all over the map there aren't very many of those and then there's a dynamic spawn so those are the things that spawn around you as you move forward There's always got to be the giant hill on every map. disappeared right in front of our eyes. Did you see that? I think he went into the ground right there. I don't know if you saw him. I'll rewind back and you'll see him just for a second. It's like he disappeared <coughs> into the ground. Constantly, I mean, I'm, I'm right beside the desert here. 
Why is it so cold? Alright. Enough of that for right now. so we can make some gasoline. And the way oil shell works is for every every oil shell you have you get 10 gas. So a thousand oil shell would be 10,000 gas. So if you think about the spike it takes a thousand gas to fill it up. <coughs> so a thousand oil shell will fill this tank up 10 times. Alright. Plus we also want to make Where'd the other two go? Damn you! off. Nothing. Alright. So what did we get so far? 50 meat, see? That's that's a stack right there. So that took me, what, about a game hour? And, uh, and that's a stack of, uh, of my main food tomorrow. When I get the, when I get the plant harvest, okay? Left. 
I don't want to use them. Alright, there we go. There's an oil shale. giant freaking herd. You see it over there? On by the road. Gotta be paying attention, people. It's a pretty healthy herd out there. Those are all soldiers. Every one of those is a soldier. That's pretty cool. It's like a platoon of zombie zombie soldiers. A couple of hazmat guys. That's the, that's the military right there. Military contingent. That got taken out. Now soldiers kind of hard. Soldiers are bullet resistant. They're just, they're bullet resistant. Rabbit over there ran into a cactus and died. That's what that scream was. Right, they're not going to go away. I was hoping they'd walk by, but they're coming. All right, then, let's do it. Come on. Yeah, brains. Oh, not a 
all the time. Seriously, another one is going to go straight down. Alright, well. We can do this. We've already cleared the coyote and the herd, so we shouldn't have any other problems. So we will do a nerd bounce.
to make gas, we need a chemistry station. Like I said, since I'm doing the mining, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up now. I don't have to mine again for a month. Not in any heavy capacity, at least. It's almost night time, so we're going to put ourselves a little, a little oh shit perch here. Why do I have this frame loss crap now? It's because I went in the desert. Oh, the storm's coming in again. Oh, so whenever the storm comes in, I, I lose it. Alright, let's try and pull out any bad guys. Blow the fuck. 
buck and a half. Alright. Anybody else in here? Serious frame loss. Wow. All right. What the fuck did she do? dungeon down there. Not what we came for. We want to try and find a beaker. We'll take that. Right. We didn't hit me, the lag did. Damn, I'm out of heals. if we can find a good old beaker. We are in the medical place, at least. Here we go, that helps. The 
This is an arrow building. Hospital. So, find all kinds of metal shit in here. Wow, this must be really choppy on video. I'm sorry guys, hopefully it goes away here shortly. The game does this. You know what I can do about it, this is crazy. I can barely move. I mean, I've got some serious frame loss. Just came out of nowhere. The oil shell, when I was in the oil shell. Some leather. This is crazy. I can barely turn and move. I feel like I'm in slow motion. This is gonna get me killed. Let's go ahead and put these shoes on. <coughs> Encumbered too. Let's get rid of those. <coughs> Talk about that later. All right, that's one of those uh, challenge quests. Kill some nurse zombies. All it's going to do is send me out in the middle of nowhere to an exclamation mark in the forest. I'm going to click on the exclamation mark, and 10 or 15 nurse zombies are going to spawn around me in a circle, and I kill them all. And then I complete the quest. I go back to the trader, and I get like 300 experience. Some of them are cool, like the ones that say kill boars. If you know you're fixing to go hunt some boars, use it, and you'll get a lead boost of experience. But one like that, stupid. feathers. Let's get on that for that iron. Don't really want to get rid of anything else. Well, get rid of that sand. Get rid of that clay. Working my encumbrance down. Steroids everywhere. Beaker. Boom! Boom tra la boom tra la la la. L to the yes. Alright. Got what we came for. Already got it cleared, so. Let's see what else we can find. Don't think I want to go up on the roof or down in the. Downstairs area. Check out the bottom floor here. Maybe we can get some lock picks out of this trash. Oop. Some brass.
Get another beaker then, come on. Give me another beaker. It's probably down where that uh that vault door was. Probably leads into the same room that vault door goes into. Nice that we found some vitamins though. Cure fatigue, so like I say, that's pretty nasty on uh, insane. I don't want to make a whole lot of noise and draw monsters from outside to in here, but I want to see if that door is just on the other opens up right over here. Is that the same door? See how it's damaged because I, I hit it on the other side. That's all right. That's why I hit it. Been in here already? I guess so. Alright. Okay, that's that L shaped room. away we got so many of them I like to sell them because look at that but we need to use one right now I'll take care of our encumbrance let's get rid of that sprained leg this should reduce it down the time that it's going to be sprained is from a bandage So you got me? Popping pills is where you can get it. Your beaker? Not always. Okay, but that's where it has a greater chance of spawning. So if you can't buy it from a vendor, or you're having trouble finding it in random loot, if you find a popping pills, or any type of, like, urgent care, or anything that's, you know, bluish, that looks like a uh, medical place, go in there, and you have a chance of getting it. Pretty good chance. Usually, you get them. Yeah, oh, sweet, another one. So that's two chemistry stations, but I think we only have seven acids, so now we need some more acid. But we'll get acid when we, uh, Start doing POIs, we'll get them in the sinks, the kitchen sinks. That was a full on antibiotic, a medical antibiotic. Cures 25 infection. Damn, another steroid? Well, the good news is we got our heels back, all of our heels back. So at least we were in, we were in a medical place. some worthy stuff. The bandages are sucking, but getting vitamins and uh, pills is nice. We 
Got a bunch of vitamins. Bunch of vitamins is good. Oh, another vitamin. Holy shit. Alright, this place is paying off. everything in the store proper. We'll have to go down inside that vault room or up on the roof to finish it. But I don't want to risk anything. It's night time. I got what I came for. And I got a nice stack of vitamins. A little more antibiotics. Even a first aid kit. See, first aid kit is a 180 health. Alright. Out to our bike, and then we're gonna head over to home, which is where that way. So, bike and then left. It's a great thing about the bike, and nothing can get me at night except vultures. I can outrun anything that comes near me, okay? On the bicycle or the mini bike car, whatever. Nothing can chase you down. You can outrun everything. So as long as you're on this bike, you can roll around at night all you want, anywhere you want. Except a vulture. A vulture can outrun anything. It's the fastest thing in the game. And vultures are designed by intention to uh, hunt you down when you're on vehicles. So be paying attention and be ready for vultures, in fact. Yeah, I got my axe. good. However, there's not very many vultures in the forest. At least not at this level. So we shouldn't really run into any vultures out here. But we are bordering on the desert. So it is possible, okay? So we can keep, our mind, keep our minds ready to deal with the vulture. Trying to follow the roads because the the forest is all mountainous and shit. I don't want to get all clustered up in the mountains. You can't ride the mini bike through all those little weird shaped hills. You get all jammed up. You can't move, and it's really dark out, and I can't see. And if I get jammed up like that in the wrong place at the wrong time, I will get killed on this bike or not. So, just sticking to the roads. Oh, I see it's all flat right there. You should be able to just cut off and go home. We need to be see that tree. Now, this is what I'm talking about. This is another reason I chopped everything down. See, I have very little vision I have. Out. So you run into a rock or a tree right here. There's a bear that's sitting there, or a pack of wolves, or a dire wolf. That's how you get killed. So you shoot out the way like that. Why is, why am I... Oh, I screwed up went into the damn town. There we go, there's base. And that's why I leave the land claim block radius on so I can see it when it's pitch dark like this. Turn off my lights. 
The only light you're really seeing is coming from that green halo and that blue shit around the edge of my screen. Otherwise, it is pitch dark. There's my helmet light and then my torch. Kind of lights it all up a little bit. Alrighty then. That's it. That's it. Now we're gold. Alright, so we're gonna sell this money. These boots. We're gonna eat that. Junk up. Hold on to those for a while. That's candy right there. Damage mitigation. I always forget to use those damn things. I don't have room for them, so I just sell them. But they're nice to block damage with. So they reduce damage that you take. make those uh, first aid kits with and the blood bags so here all right we got a couple of eggs let's make ourselves a bacon and egg station. We know that we need a beaker and five acid. I remember that. Go over here to the workstation. Type in Kim. Boom. 100 forge iron, three cooking pots, 30 short iron pipes. Setting like that. Three cooking pots. So 
chemistry station is rather expensive. Take two of those. Alright, we should have some iron, right? So we went and mined earlier all that stuff. Now you see why. You can make a cooking pot once you have a forge. Alright, make that. And what we need to do is get another 46 forge steel. So I'm gonna let that cook for a second. Let's make some more land claim plots. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, farm plots. Get that going, okay. We're also going to start melting this lead. I'm going to start melting this brass. Placeholders I'm leaving up there. scratchy. Alright, and then... Let's go ahead and get some Molotov cocktails going.
addicted to the heat. I'm telling you, it'll get worse and worse and worse. There'll be more and more of them. That's why I don't put a wall or something around your base. Alright. Always be defending the walls. Defend the walls. Alright, some more forged iron. So we just gotta sit here and kinda chill. Let this forged iron cook. Let that uh let that iron melt down because we're gonna wanna make some more repair kits anyway. Alright, so it's one of them kind of slow nights. It's our last night because now we're gonna be cooking everything up. And uh so just heard a dog out there. My flashlight mod. So I can beam out and see everything. Alright, now this should be enough. And now we should be able to make our chemistry station. You can go here, you can go here to science. Twelve minutes to make that. Store these. We find some more acid. We'll make another chemistry station. Cuts making bullets times and a half. Okay. Go ahead and put this stuff up. Now I'm going to start melting this lid. Alright, just got to wait for it to melt. So I don't really want to go anywhere. If I leave, and these forges are on, the zombies are aggroing the forges to come into the noise, the light, and the heat. And if I'm not here, they can bust through my wall. If, I, if a random herd shows up, or a bear, something strong enough to bust that wall down, and get in here and start busting up on that, that foundation right here. If they bust one block right here, It'll be like a staircase, and they'll run right up in here. And they'll come in here, and they'll destroy the forges. And then they'll be running amok inside my house, just banging on shit. There's no telling what they'll destroy. Okay? So you don't want to leave. Okay, you're kind of just stuck here. Which is why... Another reason why. You build your mines and stuff around your base. Because, like, right now, I was like, I got, what, ten, ten minutes to kill... I don't want to be away from my base, so I would just jump the wall and go over there and start mining some coal or something. Okay? But we're a bit mined out. We did a lot of mining. We did a lot of building. So we're just going to take this one easy. But you see what I'm saying? This is why we're building up this compound like this. Okay? So that we have, we have something to occupy our time at night while we're, while we're melting and stuff like that. Because I don't want to go anywhere. I go too far away from this base, I'm not here to defend it. I'm not here to defend it. It, it can get destroyed. I'm going to turn this off. Just so you can see what it all looks like without that big green glow. Alright, so we got enough of these. These are made. These are still making. Just waiting on the chemistry station now. Go ahead and start some more bullet tips. Alright, my land claim blocks are made. I think I will go and lay them down real quick.
is that icon from? Guess we got a moon somewhere. digging them up. That's how you move them. It just doesn't get destroyed. It gets put back in my inventory. That's how you would move them if you wanted to move the farm. You just dig it up and move it. Then we got farm now. But we're fixing to start growing everything. Alright, another night survived. Okay, we're we learning. some of these closer POIs. I want to talk about this now. Usually what I do is I start close to the trader. Kind of work my way out. Okay? Uh, because my encumbrance can get, I can get encumbered pretty quickly. And until I can work this out, I want to be able to travel back and forth the shortest distance possible. Now, what sucks right now is if you see this green shit, buildings that have this green shit on them on the map, that means they're destroyed buildings, blown up by bombs from the war or whatever. Okay, and uh, there's a lot of them, and they're all right around the trader. And the thing about those buildings are, is they're kind of crappy. They're crappy buildings. They have crappy loot in them. Okay, there's not very much to them. They're blown up. I, mean, I find a safe here or there, something you know. Sometimes they have safes in them, they're nice. But for the most part, they don't have much in them, okay? Uh, so I'm going to talk about my last skills, okay? While we melt this stuff down, we're going to use these points now, all right? Now we're ready to advance to the last phase, which is the, the fun phase, all right? First thing I want to do, okay, is I want to open up my inventory... All right, to where I can go looting. All right, I can still, I can, as long as I don't have all these slots opened up, then as I loot into items, I can become encumbered. If I get encumbered, my stamina regeneration slows down, and my movement slows down. I don't want that to happen. Okay, I want to be able to move fluently, and I want to be able to carry as much shit as I can. I don't want to keep running back and forth. I don't want to drop stuff. When I start looting heavy, I want to keep my loot, and I want it. Okay. So you can get pocket mods, which I showed you before, okay? But you can only get three of those. One, two, three, okay? We still haven't found another sewing kit to make the third one. Once we start looting, then we'll find lots of sewing kits, sewing kits, and we can fill it in quickly, okay? Uh, the other one is armor pocket mods. Those are clothing pocket mods that we're able to make. Armor pocket mods are kind of rare, okay? We might get lucky and find an armor pocket mod recipe and then we can just make them all ourselves. Otherwise, you're going to kind of find an armor pocket mod every once in a while. Now, RNG, random number generator, means everything is random. So, we may get lucky, and the first house we go into, find the recipe for the triple armor pocket mod. The best one you can get. That gives you three slots. Hell yeah, that's great. But in my experience, it usually takes me a good 20 or 30 levels of exploring around before I've found 
them all. Okay? And why don't I have time to wait for that shit? Okay? I need inventory now. Because now I'm going to go. Okay, I'm ready to go to that. I'm ready to go and loot. And so I want to be able to carry my loot. Okay? Good news is, there's something called an Fagetan Elixir. Which you can buy. And they're always for sale at the trader. Always. It's not random. It's always at the trader. Okay? And what it does is it resets your skill points. And you can repick all your skill points. Okay? So what I'm going to do... I'm going to go get your strength, because I've already got three of my strength opened up. Take this cigar off, because sometimes when you mess with an attribute that has a buff to it, it's bugged out. And so that's buffing strength, and that's buffing intelligence. Okay, and I don't want the, uh, the bug to occur. Okay, so my strength, I've already opened it up a little bit. I've got three points to it. And that's, that's like I say, everything I've done here is planned, okay? Three points is exactly what I want on pack meal. Pack Mule will open up some of my inventory. One, two, three. Okay. Now that gives me, see up there, carry three more items. Carry three more items. Carry four more items. That's ten slots I just opened up. Okay. Now I know I can make the three pocket mods. I'm missing one right now. Okay. Which I'll make here shortly. I'll make it today's because once I start looting, I'll uh, I'll find one fast. The sewing kits are fairly common. Okay, they're not rare. They're not common, but they're not rare either. We'll get one. Okay. We got lucky with the triple pocket mod, but usually you're you're finding a regular just armor pocket mod, which is just one slot. You're finding it here. You're finding it there. You're finding it here. You're finding it there. Okay, and there are five of them. One. Three, four, five. And that's what it would be. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so three on three on pack mule. Three points on pack mule. Your three clothing pocket mods that you start off with, and then you're kind of just slowly filling in your your five armor pocket mods as you find them. Okay, or you could pick a fourth one or point in uh in pack mule and not even worry about it. Okay? I tend to just go this way because I will find the other five eventually. One, two, three, four, five. And like I say, we got lucky and we found a plus three instead of a plus one. And so it took up three slots instead of one. So we're only missing three slots now, and we're going to fill one of those as soon as we find a sewing kit. So really, all we have to do is find two armor pocket mods. Okay, which means we can still be encumbered, but we can only be encumbered by two. Okay, when it goes over here, it'll say encumbrance two, which means we'll only get slowed down a tiny little bit. Okay. Once those two slots are emptied or, or, or opened up, then we can never be encumbered again. We'll get to a point where we won't have any more room. We can't loot anymore because we don't have any more space. But we can never ever be encumbered again, which means we can never be slowed down by encumbrance again. Okay. So at this stage now, when I'm getting ready to go loot, I'm going to pick those three points on pack meal. See, the three on strength opened me up. Okay, because I'm also going to want to pick. Or, okay, for the three minor, the three mother load, and the three pack. And it's also going to give me another sector Tyrannosaurus, which is where I like to stop for now. I'll go to Warrior. Eventually I'll go to Cage Gladiator, but I don't need that until way later. Same thing with Warrior. But I, I do want to get Athlete here shortly, because that'll help me fight. Because I want that, if you read right here, it's that Kill and Blows Grant 10 stamina. So you're getting stamina as you're fighting and killing. Plus it's uh, reduces your power attacks by 30%. And once you pick that, my uh, whenever I swing my tool, my uh, stone axe, I'll never run. My stamina won't go down. It regenerates quicker than I'm using it whenever I use that stone axe. There's no way I can run my stamina bar off ever swinging my stone axe. Once I pick athlete, okay, it's negated. That's a lie. It does go down, but it goes down so slow you don't even notice it. Okay? It takes a long fucking time for you. You swing the thing a thousand times before your stamina is gone. Okay? So I do want one more point there. And that's why this through this kind of just synergizing. Okay? I am eventually going to want to pick short order cook. Because that's the Zucker Juice smoothie. Okay? But I'm still going to be using... I have plenty of drinks. Because once I go through POIs, I'm going to be finding water and coffee and red tea goldenrod tea and all the cabinets and shit and that's just plenty 
Okay, it's plenty of drink. I have my giant stack of snowballs. I can make drinks readily, so I'm not worried about hydration. But I do want this better drink. Okay, eventually. But I need a five here. Okay. And when I when I move my strength up to five, I'm also going to uh, I'll be ready to to max these out. Not max them out, but move them up one more level. Okay. And I'll be ready to uh, to work this up to warrior. Okay. So that's a bit later on when I move that up to fives. So right now, the next thing I'm considering here is going to be Sector Tyrannosaurus, okay? That's why uh, this kind of synergizes together. So anyway, uh, the other thing I want now, okay, is going to be the skill called Lucky Loot, okay? What this does is just basically increases my loot. What it does, it doesn't really advance you to a new game stage. I'm not going to pick Lucky Looter, and suddenly I'm going to find machine guns. I'm not going to find machine guns until I'm in the Steel Age, okay? Nothing changes that. What this really affects is the rarer items that drop in your stage. Like the beaker is rare in the Stone Age. But with a good bit of Lucky Looter, I'm going to start finding beakers all over the place. Okay? It also means instead of looting plus, you know, quality 1 and quality 2 stone, Act is I'm going to start looting quality 5 and quality 6. So it's raising the quality of the items and it's opening up the rare items. Okay, There's always a chance, a small tiny chance, you can loot something from the Steel Age and the Stone Age. Okay, It is possible. But it's like 1 in 100,000. And so that, that percentage chance, that tiny little thing is now increased by Lucky Looter. Okay, So Lucky Looter really helps you get better loot. Okay. So this is part of the plan here, was to get our levels up and get ourselves all built up and get all these crafting stations and the base and the mining and all that stuff done and work our level up so that when we go hunting now, when we go fighting and POIs, we got a much better chance. We're 30% stronger than we were at level 1. Okay. Uh, part of that is the fact that we move our game stage up. We are most definitely in the Iron Age, and we are nearing the Steel Age. Okay, so that higher game stage, in conjunction with the Lucky Looter, is going to now make it where we're getting really, really good loot that we would not have got if we had uh, went straight to POIs. Okay, like some of these people are advocating that you do. Go on the go on the tutorial, and then go straight to the tutorial trader. For that for, for that quest, and then immediately start doing quests. Okay, that's not what you should be doing. Okay, you should be opening up all the stuff that I just opened up. Now you didn't need to go as far as I did and build a huge tower so you could get to level 30. Remember when I told you earlier you could you probably you could stop right now. Okay, but you definitely want to uh, get your level up to like say 20. Okay, now. What you have to understand is this is this is good. Okay, this is going to really help us. All right, but what really works is is when we have the lucky looter glasses. Okay, there's a there's a glasses out there that also gives you the lucky looter percentage. Okay, now they're pretty common early on. I'm surprised that I haven't found one yet. I haven't really been looking, but I have got three traders I've looked at. I'm surprised I haven't found one yet to be to be for sale. If they don't have one on the day ten reset, I'm pretty sure I'll find one in the next couple of days. And when that happens, the combination of the Lucky Looter glasses, the Lucky Looter skills, and the higher game stage means that we're going to get way better loot. The guy who, is, who just started and ran straight to the missions and started doing the missions. Right now he's got better loot than us because we haven't really looked. Okay, But we're fixing to go look at now. And we're going to have our inventory opened up to loot. We have our bike to travel and we have our bikes in inventory storage and we have this lucky looter and once we get them glasses it's just going to really play out okay so i'm going to pick perception three and then i want to pick lucky looter three and you don't really need to go any further than that, okay to go further than that you got to start putting a high investment into your perception starts you know spend like eight or nine more levels on perception and we don't really want to do that because there's nothing else really in perception that we want, except for lockpicking. Okay.
Okay. We're gonna pick one lockpick now. And now we can make lockpicks. Okay. Now, I don't always pick lockpicking. Like I say, I don't always pick animal tracker. Those two are kind of optional for me. But if you pick those two, that's it. You're, you can open as many safes as you want. You don't have, you don't have to rely on the lockpicks you find. Um, and same thing with the animal tracker. You can pretty much always find meat whenever you want. Okay, so picking those two does kind of help, but I would never pick them early on. Okay, picking them now though is helpful. Okay, so now that's it. My base character has been developed. Okay, all my crafting stations are open. I have built them all. My bike is readily available. It's built. Okay, I can heal. I've got farm. I've got infinite food, infinite water, infinite heals. Stack antibiotics sitting there waiting on me. Okay. I'm able to bust through doors really fast. I've got lots of resources. My base is built. That's all the main things in the game. Okay. From this point, all it's, uh, it's all about just getting better gear. And now when I go into the POIs, that's the kind of loot that I'm going to be getting. I'm going to switch loot tables now. From mining and crafting and, and farming and food and medicine, I'm going to switch to gear. By going through POIs, I'm gonna start looking for this kind of loot. Okay. And it's gonna be really nice because I have, like I say, a higher game stage. And I've got my lucky looter. And as soon as I find those damn glasses, it's gonna be just starling. It's gonna be like, holy shit. Okay. So now, I wanna make some lockpicks. I remember. Uh, that's right, you need a uh, forge deal to make lockpicks. Right, my friend. Uh... Right, here's my chemistry station. And, uh. How the fuck? I can't remember. It's been so long since I did it. parts and forged iron and that's another reason we jack cars to get lots of mechanical parts okay all right so now let's finish up our forged iron okay get that cooking and I'm gonna start melting now this brass okay let's finish up some more lead tips uh, bullet tips okay now let's lay our chemistry station down. Put that over here. All right, we're gonna need some wood. All right, and now that we got our chemistry station up, this is why we went we mined all of that coal and nitrate, was so that we can make gunpowder. Chemistry station is gonna make it, or we can make it much, much fast, uh, much more of it. Okay, so we're gonna go with uh, 3,400, just so we have a little left. Not almost an hour. Okay, this is why we want more than one chemistry station. All right. So everything is kind of working in tangent, okay? Now I would like to have found my chemistry station a little earlier. Normally I do get the beaker earlier. I would say 90% of my games I have the beaker by day four or five. Okay, because the merchants, the traders are generally selling them. So this time it kind of got lagged behind. As a result, my bullets aren't made yet. So RNG has an effect on everything, okay? Random number generator. You just have to adapt to that and kind of, you know, change your plan up. Okay. So now we're gonna make bullet casings. Alright, our forged iron is done. So we're gonna move it here. We're gonna grab our mechanical parts. Okay. Go ahead and refresh.
fresh on our repair kits. Alright, and now we're gonna make hotbooks. Alright. Just a stack of 50 will do me. Okay? So I'm gonna get those made. I can always come back and make more later. But 50 pretty generally covers me pretty solid for a while. Okay? I also want to go ahead and make some more duct tape. So I'm gonna get my bones. I'm gonna get my snowballs. Now that I make some murky water. I'm gonna make say 40 of them. Okay. Save our empty jars for Molotovs. Alright, actually just put the bones back. We'll get those when we got our murky water ready. Okay. So now I'm gonna come over here. Make some more bullet tips. And make some more bullet casing. Go ahead and melt the rest of this brass down. Alright. So now while all this is cooking up, I got three different things cooking here, you see? It's a lot of heat. The heat map is going nuts be under attack. Now, it won't be long before I start having screamers. And that means screamers will come to, the, come to all this heat and they'll scream and then a whole giant horde of zombies will attack me. And they'll just keep on screaming and keep on screaming and keep on screaming. And the zombies will not stop attacking me until I kill those screamers. Okay. So our farm is almost done. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and just reset the farm. Uh, because I have enough stuff, and I have more farm plots now, and I just want to get everything growing, and I want to have it all kind of ready in the morning, okay? I'm out of food, and I want to make whatever food I can make now. It's just not pouring down rain, and I'm not mining anymore. I'm not going to eat my food up so quickly, okay? I mean, I poured through that food because it was, it was pouring down rain, it was freezing cold, and I was mining all at the same time. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and reset these two so they're all growing at the same time because I hate that. All right, so they should all kind of be ready at the same time. All right. Uh, I'm going to get my potatoes. 